Here's example 15 with trig identities, and uh, sadly it is going to be about as bad as it looks. But anyway, um, if you want a copy of this packet that we've been using for these videos, uh, check the video description here. There's a link. Uh, you can click and open up this packet, print it out if you'd like. So uh, 1 plus sine of theta over 1 minus sine of theta <coughs> minus 1 minus sine of theta over 1 plus sine of theta equals 4 tangent theta secant theta. Okay. So let's go back to our general process here from an earlier video. And uh, always start on one side, try to make it look like the other side, and usually start with a more complicated side. So the left side, I think, is a little more complicated because we've got uh, quotients of sums and differences. On the right-hand side, yeah, we have tangent and secant, which are more complicated than just sine. But we're just multiplying three things together here. Uh, there's no division. <clears throat> No subtraction, addition mixed into it. But here on the left-hand side, we have addition, subtraction, division, more subtraction, more addition. Um, lots of things going on there. So let's start with the left side, make it look like the right. Okay. So um, 1 plus sine of theta over 1 minus sine of theta uh, minus 1 minus sine of theta over 1 plus sine of theta. Okay, so what could we do? Well, let's <clears throat> go back to our general process here. So what are some things to try? Well, what do we have here? We have a difference of two quotients, right? One quotient minus another quotient. So uh, rewrite sums of differences of quotients as a single quotient. In other words, get a common denominator. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's get a common denominator. So denominator here is 1 minus sine. Denominator here is 1 plus sine. So the common denominator is unfortunately going to be the product of these two. So the common denominator is 1 minus sine of theta times 1 plus sine of theta. So it's a pretty nasty common denominator, but you know it's we gotta we gotta work with it. So uh, basically, common denominator is this denominator times that one. So what we have to do is take this first quotient, one plus sine of theta over one minus sine of theta, and multiply it by one plus sine of theta over one plus sine of theta. Okay, and then. Um, the second quotient, so that's 1 minus sine of theta over 1 plus sine of theta. We have to multiply this second guy by uh, 1 minus sine of theta over 1 minus sine of theta. Okay. okay, because our common denominator is 1 minus sine of theta times 1 plus sine of theta, we already have 1 minus sine of theta here, so we've got to multiply it by 1 plus sine of theta to make that uh, okay. And then here, denominator 1 plus sine of theta, so we have to multiply it by 1 minus sine of theta to get our common denominator there, okay? Now, what we have to do here is just FOIL. So we have uh, one, two, three, four things to FOIL. Ugh, okay. Actually, two of them are the same thing, so that's good. Um, and the other two are really pretty much almost, uh, the process is gonna be the same. But anyway, um, so we can FOIL or we could use the property that, you know, uh, 1 plus sine of theta times 1 plus sine of theta, that's uh, 1 plus sine of theta quantity squared. Okay, we know that a plus b squared, quantity squared, is a squared plus 2ab plus b squared, right? Or um, here we have 1 plus sine of theta, so that's like 1 plus x. Okay, 1 plus x quantity squared is 1 plus 2x plus x squared. Well, we don't have x, we have sine of theta, but that does not mean anything at all. Okay, that doesn't change anything at all. So 1 plus sine of theta, quantity squared. 1 is still 1, 2 is still 2. x is now sine of theta. Okay, instead of uh, x, we have sine of theta. And then x squared is now sine of theta, quantity squared. So x squared is sine squared of theta. Okay, so even though we have sine of theta instead of x, absolutely nothing changes. And remember, 1 plus sine of theta times 1 plus sine of theta, that is 1 plus sine of theta quantity squared. Okay? If you're not comfortable with any of that, you can, of course, just FOIL this out. So let's just FOIL it out just in case. Because um, some people watching this video may not be comfortable with that, and that's totally fine, because it is kind of complicated with all the trig functions flying around all over the place. Uh, it's kind of a mess, so let's just FOIL. So first is 1, outer plus sine of theta, inner plus another sine of theta, uh, last plus sine squared of theta. Okay, and then what happens on the bottom? One minus sine of theta times one plus sine of theta. If we foil, so first of all, we can uh, before foiling, we could just use that fact that uh, a minus b times a plus b gives us a squared minus b squared. Okay, we could use that. Um, or if we just want to foil, then we'll have first is one, outer is uh, plus sine of theta. 
inner is uh, minus sine of theta. Okay. And then last is going to be minus sine squared of theta. Okay, so sine of theta times sine of theta, one has a minus sign, one has a plus sign. So that gives us minus sine squared of theta. Okay. And uh, plus sine of theta, minus sine of theta, those cancel. So we're just left with one minus sine squared of theta, that's good. Okay, that's this whole first mess here. Now what about over here? Minus this mess here. So FOIL again, um, or we could just use the property that A minus B squared is uh, A squared minus 2AB plus B squared. Okay, where instead of A and B, we have one and sine of theta, because it's one minus sine of theta times one minus sine of theta, that's one minus sine of theta quantity squared. Okay. But anyway, if you just want to FOIL, first is one, outer is minus sine of theta, inner is minus another sine of theta, last is uh, sine of theta times sine of theta, both have a minus sign, so minus minus when you multiply becomes positive, so plus sine squared of theta. Okay, okay. Uh, and then the bottom here, one plus sine of theta times one minus sine of theta, that's uh, identical uh, literally identical to this, one minus sine of theta times one plus sine of theta, same denominator. That was the whole point of this, right? We're getting a common denominator. So of course this denominator should be the same. So it's one minus sine squared of theta. Okay. All right, now what's next? Well, now let's simplify a little bit. So one plus two sine of theta uh, plus sine squared of theta all over one minus sine squared of theta and these S's come out so goofy. Um, and then minus uh, this mess here, so that's one minus two sine of theta. And then a plus sine squared of theta, all divided by the same denominator, one minus sine squared of theta. Okay, so now since we have a common denominator, we can squish everything into one quotient, that's good. So um, what we have on top is one plus two sine of theta plus sine squared of theta, <clears throat> and then minus, we have to be careful here. Uh, why do we have to be careful? I'll explain it in a minute. Minus one minus two sine of theta plus sine squared of theta. Now it might be tempting just to leave it at that, but the way I have it written here, that's wrong. Okay, that's, uh, first of all, the bottom is still the same, one minus sine squared of theta. Why is this wrong? Because it's this quotient minus this entire quotient. So it's really minus this whole thing here. Okay, so we gotta have parentheses around this whole thing here because we're subtracting the entire thing from this here. Okay, if we do it without the parentheses, that's not really correct. Okay, so we gotta be very careful about that. Okay. So now, uh, completely out of rim here, that's not good. Um, let's maybe go around to the back of the paper. So uh, this equals, so let's just uh, rewrite this here. One plus two sine of theta plus sine squared of theta minus this expression in parentheses here. So that's one plus uh, two sine of theta plus sine squared of theta minus that expression in parentheses, which was one minus two sine of theta uh, plus sine squared of theta. Okay, one minus two sine, oops, one minus two sine theta plus sine squared of theta in the parentheses there. Okay, and then one minus sine squared of theta all on the bottom. Oops, okay. Okay, now let's simplify this. So now let's uh, drop the parentheses. So we're gonna distribute this negative. So this is going to be one plus two sine of theta plus sine squared of theta uh, minus one minus negative two sine theta becomes plus two sine theta. And then minus sine squared of theta all over one minus sine squared of theta, okay? Okay, now what cancels? One, blah, 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 minus one. Those are gone. Plus sine squared of theta, blah, 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 minus sine squared of theta. Those cancel, that's great. Two sine theta, blah, 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 plus two sine theta. So what we have is uh, four sine of theta on the top, okay? And on the bottom is still one minus sine squared of theta, okay? Okay, um, now where do we want to be? Remember, we wanted to eventually have four tangent theta, secant theta, okay? So tangent um, and secant, okay, we want to end up with those in the end, but uh, what we have is this, so where can we go from there? Well, what jumps out at us? So the four sine theta, we messed around with all that, we're done with the top, there's really not much else we could do with the top. 
we just spend a lot of time, you know, working with the top, simplifying it, and all that stuff. So let's focus on the bottom now. 1 minus sine squared of theta, does that look like anything? Well, yeah, 1 uh, trig function squared, we might think Pythagorean identity. Okay, that, that is what we want to think when we see that. And is that going to work? Well, there's not much else we could try, so hopefully it'll work. So let's try that. Okay, so sine squared of theta plus cosine squared of theta equals 1. Okay. So we can manipulate this, because since this is a previously established identity, it's okay to manipulate that to our will. Okay, we can manipulate it to make it more useful to us. So sine squared of theta plus cosine squared of theta is 1. Okay. So let's come down here. Uh, sine squared of theta plus cosine squared of theta is 1. But what we have is 1 minus sine squared of theta. So let's subtract sine squared from both sides here. And again, um, when you're establishing an identity, you have to work on one side. Always start on one side and try to make it look like the other side. Always just manipulate one side when you're establishing an identity. But when you're using a previously established identity, you can manipulate it to your will, um, which is what we're doing here. Okay, this is a previously established identity, one of the most important ones in all of math. Um, and we're going to subtract sine squared from both sides, which is okay here, okay, because it's a previously established identity. That's okay. Uh, be careful with that. So now cosine squared of theta is 1 minus sine squared of theta. Okay, here's 1 minus sine squared of theta. So that is cosine squared of theta. Okay, so we're just going to put that in here. Okay, how do we know to do this? Well, there's uh, really not much else to do at this point, okay, because we just mess around with the top a lot. With the bottom, uh, Pythagorean identity should jump out at us because we have a trig function squared and a 1. So think about that, Pythagorean identities, and try that, see if it works. Okay. Now, uh, is that going to get us what we want? So where do we want to be? We eventually want to be with tangent and secants. Okay? So remember, keep our goal in mind, right? That's one of our steps. Keep the goal in mind. Okay? Um, and uh, related to that, multiply by 1 or add 0 in a useful way. That we don't really have to worry about that for this step. Uh, but keep our goal in mind. So we want to eventually have a tangent and a secant. We have our 4, right? There's our 4. Here's our 4 we need. That's good. So now we just need a tangent and a secant. <clears throat> well, I know... Uh, that's so let's first rewrite it like this so 4 sine of theta over cosine of theta times cosine of theta okay I know that sine of theta over cosine of theta is tangent I know that 1 over cosine of theta is secant so that's pretty much what I want so I just have to rewrite it like this uh, so this equals 4 sine of theta over cosine of theta and then this cosine of theta on the bottom let me pull it off and write that as times 1 over cosine of theta. Okay? And of course, it's, it's always okay to do that because this is multiplication and division. There's no addition, subtraction to worry about. So nothing crazy going on there. And remember, this is like a multiply by 1 on top because um, multiplying by 1 doesn't really do anything. So you can just think of the top as 4 sine of theta times 1. And then you can split up that product into two fractions. So 4 sine of theta over cosine of theta times 1 over cosine of theta. So that is 4 times the tangent of theta Okay, sine of theta over cosine of theta, that's tangent of theta. And then 1 over cosine of theta, we know that that's secant of theta. Okay. And is that what we wanted? 4 tangent theta, secant theta. Let's go back to the other side of the paper. Uh, 4 tangent theta, secant of theta, yeah, that's exactly what we wanted. It probably should have given this problem its own entire page. Anyway, that's exactly what we wanted, that's what we have, that's great, check mark, we're done. So let's just recap what we did real quick. So we started with this mess, uh, this expression on the left here. And we said, okay, it's a difference of two quotients, so let's try and get a common denominator. Uh, that is one of our steps here. Rewrite sums and differences of quotients as a single quotient. In other words, get a common denominator. Okay, that's exactly what we did. And uh, multiply the first term by this mess here. Multiply the second term by this mess here. That gives us our common denominator. Foil a bunch. Do a lot of foiling here. Simplify. Be very careful when you uh, squish them into one quotient. Be very careful that you're subtracting this entire thing. So that's why you got to have these parentheses here. Okay, so it's uh, got to be very, very careful about that. Okay, and then uh, we ran out of room, so we went to the other side. And uh, so same thing again here. Uh, got to have the parentheses, be very careful about that. Then we distributed the minus sign so that we could drop the parentheses. So minus 1 plus 2 sine theta minus sine squared theta. A lot of stuff canceled. That was great. Uh, this, these two things combined, so 4 sine theta. Then we had this on the bottom, and we said, okay, not much else to really do at this point um, with the top anyway, so let's focus on the bottom now. 1 minus sine squared theta. Uh, when we see something like that, we want to think Pythagorean identity, and we know that from the Pythagorean identity, 1 minus sine squared theta is cosine squared theta. Okay, so we toss that into there. 
And we said, okay, what else can we do? Not a whole lot else. Let's say cosine squared of theta is cosine times cosine. So then we say, okay, sine over cosine is tangent. One over cosine, as we have a one on top because you're uh, sort of like always multiplying by one in the background. Multiplying by one doesn't really do anything. So we can just have that in there and write it explicitly because it's really there, just kind of there in the background, not really doing anything. Anyway, um, in other words, we just split this apart into two fractions. So four sine of theta over cosine of theta times one over cosine of theta. That gave us four tangent theta secant of theta, which is what we wanted, okay? So um, that's it for example 15, a okay, big mess there, and example 16 coming up in the next video.